Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome again to another episode of Discover Islam. We are very fortunate and lucky today to have with us Professor Anne-Marie Schimmel from Germany. Welcome, Professor Schimmel. Professor Schimmel is a world-renowned scholar of Islamic studies. She has published more than 80 books about Islam and, and many hundreds of articles and lectures and supervised many PhD dissertations in world-renowned universities. Professor Schimmel, um, our subject today is about uh, Allama Iqbal or Muhammad Iqbal. Uh, what did fascinate you about Iqbal that you came to love him so much and write about him? When I was a student of 18 years, I read an article of Professor Nicholson about Iqbal's uh, Persian uh, poetry as published in the Payama Mashriq in 1923. This is the message of the East, which he wrote as a response to the West Östliche Divan, the great work of our German poet Goethe. And in one of the poems, he makes Goethe and Molana Rumi meet in paradise, and they agree uh, that love is uh, from Adam and Zireki, yani cunning intellect is from Satan. And I like this poem, and I like the whole article, and I thought if there is a poet in the Indo-Muslim world who lo loves both Rumi and Goethe, this will be my poet. It was many years before the creation of Pakistan, which was yes. in 1940, and after Pakistan came into existence, I was asked to write a few articles for the Pakistan Quarterly. And instead of a remuneration, I asked them to send me some books of Iqbal, which they did. And strangely enough, as uh, the Kismet would have it, a year later I met a, a German poet who again, no, a German philosopher who had a poet friend, who in turn had been in touch with Alama Iqbal because he has read some of his poems in English and had made them into German poetry. And Iqbal sent him two of his books. Since he couldn't read Persian, I inherited the books. And I was so fascinated, especially by the Javed Name, which is a description of the poet's Mi'raj through the different spheres where he discusses religion and politics and poetry with the inhabitant of the different spheres, be they Muslims or non-Muslims. And I immediately sat down and, and translated this into German poetry. And at that time, I was living and teaching in Turkey. And I talked so much about Iqbal to my Turks that they said, we have also to know something about this man. So I gave lectures in Turkish. And then I said, we want to see this Javed Name, this Mi'araj of, of Iqbal. So I sat down and translated it into Turkish with a sharh. Of course, in prose, I couldn't do it in poetry. And the Pakistan government invited me. And so in the late January of 58, uh, I went first to Pakistan. And I had the chance to talk about Iqbal, to work about him, to meet his family. And ever since, I was infatuated by his work. And I have seen how in the course of 40 years, his image has been changing among the Muslims of Pakistan. Once he was pro-Western, when he was anti-Western. You know, you can do everything to a dead poet. <laughs> and, uh, but I always uh, defended his, the religious basis of his thought. And I felt that both in his poetry and in his prose, he really to write, to do what he calls a reconstruction of uh, Islamic thought, reflection of religious thought in the Islamic world. And did, I think did he write anything other than the reconstruction and prose? Yes, he. I mean, we have found uh, his diary, his son published it. It's a diary he published when he came back from Germany mm -hmm. to, to, to India. And it's very interesting because it contains some ideas which he later on developed in his poetry. And then, of course, he published his thesis about the development of metaphysics uh, in Persia which is very interesting. In the, German? No, that's in English. in English. It was a BA thesis of Oxford, of Cambridge, yeah. and it uh, was then reworked as a PhD thesis in the University of Munich in Germany. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because Iqbal at that point in 1907 was still very much in the tradition and a way of thinking. And uh, he loved Ibn Arabi, whom he later disliked thoroughly. And, uh, 
but he gives a very interesting survey of the development of uh, metaphysics, as he said, in the history of Iran from the days of Zarathustra to the days of uh, the Bab, mm -hmm. the Babis. But later on, he was not very fond of this book anymore. He wrote also something, or rather, a number of articles in various journals, and uh, he was a prolific Another writer. They are collected in a volume? Yes, they, they are all collected. They are all collected. It's an enormous amount of material collected in, in English, but of course the majority is in Urdu and in Persian. And his diary was in Urdu or in His diary was in English. In English. It's called Stray Reflections. I mean, the title was given to it by his son. Yes. It's very interesting, and there are remarks, for instance, against the emancipation of women, mm -hmm. which the Pakistanis don't like to hear anymore, yes. and about German literature, about German culture, about the importance of, uh, of a real understanding the depth of Islamic thought. To how extent was he influenced by German philosophers and thinkers? To quite a bit. Uh, he was not very fond <coughs> of Kant. He thought he was too German and yeah. too rigorous. Uh, but, uh, and Hegel influenced him to a certain extent. But he had a very naughty poem in the Payam of Bashrik where he calls Hegel a chicken that laid eggs without having seen a uh, 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 a cock, a rooster, uh -huh. yes. which is nasty, of yes. course. It's too, too, it's too much theory in Hegel. Mm -hmm. He was very influenced by Nietzsche, mm -hmm. <coughs> but only to a certain extent, because he could not accept uh, Nietzsche's uh, denial of God mm -hmm. and the Superman. What he, many scholars have thought that Iqbal's Mar the Mormon, yani the true Mormon, it was uh, an adaptation of uh, Nietzsche's Superman, but in reality, Nietzsche's Superman dies, uh, appears only after God has died. And how could Iqbal, as a Muslim, think, uh, have the idea that God should have died? Impossible. Mm -hmm. For him, the Superman is the man who is closest to God. Mm -hmm. And that is his great contribution. There like, is a, like the concept of Ar-Rajul al-Kamil. Yes, oh. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, he loves... Uh, he is critical of theoretical Sufism, such as Ibn Arabi, uh, but he loves Maulana Rumi, and Maulana Rumi is really his murshid, and he has written all his Persian masnavis in the uh, same meter, in Ramal Muthaman, uh, Musadas, uh, as Rumi's masnavi, and he could easily insult, insert verses from Rumi into his own poetry. Mm -hmm. His uh, payama, his first uh, major work in Persian were the Asrar al-Khudi, uh, the mysteries of the self. Khudi is a word which is very difficult to translate. It had usually a negative connotation in Urdu and Persian as selfishness, egotism, but in Iqbal's work it becomes the essence of the human being which should be developed uh, in a positive way. And the use of Khudi in this sense is found once in a prose work of Maulana Rumi, so I don't know mm -hmm. if it's just uh, by chance or whether he had read that. Mm -hmm. and who, uh, who, who did influence him from among the, the Urdu poets and the Persian poets of his time? He, uh, what was his position? His, no, or? did anybody influence him or was he influenced by some famous poet? Uh, yes, he was influenced mm -hmm. to a certain extent by Bedil, who died in 1721 and whose Persian style is extremely difficult. And he was, to a certain extent, influenced by Ghalib, uh -huh. the great Urdu writer who died in uh, 1869. But on the whole, I think the influence of Goethe was strongest on his, the build-up of his mind. And then, of course, when he wrote his visionary Mi'araj, he was influenced by Milton, Paradise Lost, and he was also influenced by Dante's Divine Comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has a number of European influences, uh, but he had put them together in a very, very beautiful way, and his main wish is uh, to revive the Muslims to a higher consciousness. He thinks the Muslims have dwelt too long in the fragrant gardens of Iran, and he called them to come back to the deserts of Arabia to learn a little bit fighting for life. 
which is an interesting point. Very briefly, Professor, uh, a last word about Zabura Ajam. Ah, yeah, this is a, a very nice uh, collection of Persian Ghazaliyat, uh, but it's not, I wouldn't call it his greatest work. Poetically, it's very nice. For me, the best thing is the Payam and Mashrik, and then in, in uh, Bala Jibril, he had this marvelous poem on the Mosque of Cordova, which for him represents really the past glory of the Muslim and which should inspire the Muslim to continue in their effort to rebuild the glorious past of them. We have to stop here. Thank you very much. And we hope that we have another chance again to talk about him. Shukran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.